Greetings and peace be with you. I am Ben and today we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. We need to ask ourselves, do we really understand the Lord's Prayer? Now when I say the Lord's Prayer, of course, I am referring to the example of prayer that the Lord gave in, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 13. So let's go ahead and get started. We will read and talk about it as we go. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So, the Lord here is giving us an example of prayer, not necessarily a set repetition prayer. We know that because in the preceding verses he says, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So, the Lord's Prayer is not something that we are to recite over and over again. It is an example that we should, how we should mold our prayers. Now, it is not enough just to read it, but we have to understand it. And when we understand it, then we can put it in our hearts and start to actually pray in the manner that Christ has taught us. So, the first thing Christ teaches us, he says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So first we need to acknowledge that we have a Father in heaven. And we are to hallow his name. Now, what does that mean, hallow of his name? Now, all of us are the children of God, and as such, we have the capacity to take upon ourselves the name of God. Now, as we sanctify our own lives, we are actually sanctifying the name of God because God has put a part of himself in each of us. He has given us a spirit, and it's part of him. And... By sanctifying our own lives, by increasing to follow the path of the Lord, we are sanctifying or hallowing his, the name that he has given to us, which is his own name. Christ then says, Thy kingdom done, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now when you say, when, when, when we say thy kingdom come, do we really understand what that means? When the Lord is talking about his kingdom, he's talking both a spiritual and political kingdom. Now, of course, through the church, we have the spiritual kingdom. But when Christ returns, he will establish his political kingdom, and he will be the head of the nations. When the Lord is talking about his kingdom come, he's talking about that kingdom, which he will establish over the nations. Now, do you, under do you understand what that means? Do you know the events that have to take place in order for that to happen? The only way the Lord will come is after the desolation. When you are praying for the for the kingdom of the Lord to come, you are asking God to fulfill his promise to bring about the desolation in which is required to teach us how to really follow the path of the Lord. In fact, I, 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 don't, I don't feel it is right anymore to pray for the safety of the nations. Instead, I feel it is important to pray that the Lord will do what is necessary in order to bring about his kingdom. And that will mean the overthrow and desolation of the nations that are in the world today. 
when you're asking the kingdom of the Lord to come, all the, all the prophecies that you read in the scriptures, that's what you're asking to be fulfilled. Now, people don't really wish for that because they like the status quo, they like the way things are, they don't want to go through the hardship that is required. But if you are truly praying in the manner that the Lord has wanted, you will want the will of the Lord to be done and do what is necessary to bring about the establishment of his kingdom. And he says, Give us this day our daily bread. Now this is something that we have completely lost track of. You see, the Lord is brilliant. He made it possible for us all to eat free because we would work hard and the Lord would increase our harvest. Instead, we have abandoned that system in favor of money. And so, instead of the Lord giving us food for free, we are buying food from our enemies, the merchants, the merchant class, the super merchant class. They are in control of the majority of the, of the, of the farms and agriculture and livestock. They control it, they own it, and they'll, they're willing to give you part of it for your money. If, if uh, when, you, when you say, give us this day our daily bread, you are supposed to be following the agricultural system that the Lord has established, in which you will receive food for free through the blessing of the Lord and the harvest that he gives you. Otherwise, you are not relying on God for your food and instead turning towards your enemies. The next verse is, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, of course, this this is talking about our our, our spiritual grievances that or offenses that we have against each other. But you know what? It goes much deeper than that as well. In the law, um, Moses says, for every one dollar you borrow, you give one dollar back. And he says, no usury among the house of Israel, which means no uh, borrowing money at interest. If you only give one dollar, you can only receive one dollar back. That's, that's, that's the, the law. Now Jesus says, keep the law, but it's even better if you give if you loan money to those who cannot pay you back so here the Lord is teaching us by saying I forgive us our debts as we forget those who are in debt to us so we have done so much against the Lord and nothing we do will be able to repay it back but the Lord will forgive us and, and uh, cleanse us. Now the Lord wants us to not only forgive people um, our offenses, but specifically the Lord wants us to forgive each other our financial debt. Now of course this doesn't mean that we should be buying whatever we want in order to just get free stuff. Under the Lord's system, we are to be making most of our things. But in today, we have become so financially bondaged to the super merchant class. And that goes against what the Lord is trying to teach us. We need to forgive each other our debts, literally our financial debts. And it is even better for us if we will loan money to those who cannot repay us back. And then will the Lord look upon us as his people 
and see that we are trying to fulfill his word and then he will forgive us of the gross injustice that we have done against him. And then finally it says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So Israel wanted to be like the nations. So the Lord cast them out of their land and said, All right, go be among the nations. Now uh, we as their descendants are continuing in that state. We are among the nations. Now, the nations are teaching us one way, but the Lord is trying to teach us another way. If we go about haphazardly and just go along with what the nations are doing, uh, we are being led into evil through the temptation of the Gentiles. We ought to pray to the Lord and ask him to teach us his right way and then live it and he will lead us away from the temptation of the gentiles and deliver us from the evil that the works of the gentiles will bring upon the society and when we do that we will have the kingdom of the lord we will have the power of the lord and we will have the glory the Lord wants us to have forever. And it says amen, which means so that it uh, means true, it is truth, basically. So that is the true meaning of the Lord's Prayer. And we need to model our thoughts and our prayers to heaven in, in, to, to match it if we are to truly follow the Lord. I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.